Christmas is a time of year to be happy, merry, and joyful, at least for most people. I love spreading cheer to family and friends on Christmas. My joyful mood usually translates to my coworkers as well. I work in customer service, which many people know can be a nightmare at Christmas time, so it helps to try and stay upbeat. Well, on this specific Christmas Eve, customers were doing some final Christmas shopping before Christmas Day. Right at the end of my shift, I cashed out a pretty normal looking guy. I would say the average height range of like 5'7 and maybe 150 pounds. He had parted black hair, glasses, and was probably in his mid-40s. He was buying some fairly normal stuff and not really anything Christmas related. The whole interaction was mostly friendly until the very end when I said something I now wish I didn't say. I ended our transaction by saying in my bubbly voice, Thank you, sir, and have a happy holiday. He stopped and turned back to me and said, What did you just say? I responded nervously and semi-confused. Have a happy holiday? He stormed back to my register and screamed at the top of his lungs, It's Merry Christmas! I backed away in a slight panic and just said, Okay, sir, I'm sorry. He walked away mumbling to himself, but I could tell he was furious by his recent actions. For a couple of minutes, I kept staring outside and I could see him pacing in front of the store, still seemingly mumbling to himself. A few people actually came into the store and said that there was someone outside talking about Christmas and Jesus' birthday. I began to panic, thinking this guy was going to come into the store again or wait until I got out and try to follow me home or something. Well, luckily for me, my boyfriend worked at the same store and he was driving us to my mom's house for a Christmas Eve party at the end of the night. We left shortly after six, and at first I was relieved when I didn't see the man outside. We were almost to my boyfriend's car when we saw the man running after us from the side of the store. My boyfriend opened up the back seat door so I could hop in, and he stood there in front of the car. My boyfriend said in a stern voice, Hey, is there a problem, man? The man, still in a rage, said, That lady has no respect for Jesus or Christmas and she should be punished. My boyfriend, confused, told the man to back away and leave us alone, and the crazy man actually tried to jump past my boyfriend to get into the car to punish me or whatever that meant. My boyfriend slammed the guy down to the ground and got in the car and we drove off. Like fools, we decided on the drive not to call 911 because we didn't want to bother them on Christmas Eve, so we thought and just wanted to forget the event. On December 26th, we did alert our store manager of the situation so we could call the police if the guy ever came back into the store. I still work at the store, and almost a year later, I have never seen that man again. I can say for certainty that I will never say happy holidays again. I love Christmas. It has always been a great day to spend with my family and call me cheesy, but I really just enjoy the spirit of the day. My whole family and I had just finished a beautiful Christmas dinner and most of my family went into the living room to wait for me to exchange presents. Christmas day was when we did presents with the grandparents and cousins. I was in the kitchen watching dishes with my brother Jake and cousin Teresa. While I was washing dishes, I looked out the window and thought I noticed somebody out by my shed. I didn't really let it bother me because I figured it was some kind of shadow from the tree. After a few more minutes of washing, I noticed the figure again, and this time, I was definitely sure that it was a man. I told my brother and cousin to look out the window, but don't make it obvious. They noticed it as well. We all talked quietly among ourselves, trying to figure out what we should do. Our thought was that this man was technically trespassing in my backyard, so we decided to call the police. They told us that they would send somebody out to take a look right away. Trying not to panic and hoping everything stayed how it was until the police showed up was not easy. The kids started to get restless as well as the grandparents were wondering what was the holdup. My parents knew something wasn't right, but they did a really great job of keeping everybody in the living room. After a couple of minutes, we noticed the man starting to approach my house, and he wasn't alone. 
there were three more men that came out from behind the shed. They started to surround my house. Confused and terrified, we tried to remain calm. What happened next was nothing shy of a Christmas miracle. The flashing lights appeared and we heard a minor altercation outside of the house. The officers were able to catch one of the men while the other three fled. While somehow not bringing a lot of attention to my family inside, I spoke with the cop outside and gave my statement. Well, it turns out my cousin Teresa had broken up with her boyfriend several months before Christmas, and the man they detained was, in fact, her ex-boyfriend. Teresa had started seeing somebody new, and this man figured the new boyfriend would be at the house for the Christmas party. Her ex and his friends clearly planned on attacking him, or at least putting a good scare into him, so I thought. Until the officer informed us that my cousin's ex was equipped with a knife and brass knuckles in his back pocket. Luckily, nobody got hurt, and I'm not actually sure what kind of trouble he got into for this. The rest of the night went smooth, and we opened presents, but I had an uneasy feeling for the rest of the night that the other men might return and try to finish the plan they started. Being the father of two small children, Christmas Eve is usually a very early night for my family because the kids wake me up around 6am for Santa's presents. At about 10pm I got into bed with my wife and started to fall asleep. Shortly after this I was jolted awake by our doorbell. I jumped out of bed and ran down the stairs. More angry than anything else that some idiot rang my doorbell on Christmas Eve after 11pm with two small children asleep. Without even thinking, I opened the door and said, What do you want? It was an old man with a dirty black beard. He was wearing a red jacket and red sweatpants. His face was filthy. He said in a slow and haunting voice, Please, let old Chris Kringle come inside and get warm. I slammed the door in his face and said through the door, If you don't leave right now, I'm calling the cops. The man was quiet for a moment, and then knocked on the door slowly. I yelled one more time, trying not to wake my kids. Do you want to be arrested? He then started to bang on my door vigorously and relentlessly. My wife then ran down the stairs, who I might add is a third degree black belt, and asked what was going on. I told her to call the police and then make sure the kids were alright. The man must have heard me on the phone because he stopped knocking. I could hear him muffled through the door say, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. And then he laughed as he walked away. After feeling a slight moment of relief thinking this ordeal was over, I decided to wait at the front door until the police showed up. A cop showed up several minutes later and I explained the situation to him. He stated that he had no other calls or similar reports like this tonight and that's when we heard my wife scream from the kids room. The police officer headed up the stairs first with me right behind him. The man was trying to break into the window where my daughter slept. The cop immediately tased and arrested the man who just kept saying, Don't worry, I'm Santa Claus, over and over again. The situation was never really explained to me. Apparently he was just a homeless man who was wandering around. The cop said that he may have been possibly on something. Either way, I never sleep quite right on Christmas anymore. First, let me say I come from a somewhat unconventional family. We are all a little weird or wacky in our own way. Sometimes we get along great and sometimes not so much. On Christmas Day, my parents and I usually stay home and don't see any of our extended family. However, this past year, we decided to go to my grandmother's house. This is a little different because my grandmother and I have a very rocky relationship with one another. I have overheard my dad mentioning stories about my grandmother and my now deceased grandfather that bordered on child abuse. I remember being really young and my grandparents screaming at me for the smallest things and my parents abruptly taking me home. But anyway, I'm in my 20s now and my father decided since it was Christmas we could give spending the holiday at my grandma's a chance. The day started out pretty uneventful and, dare I say, 
pleasant. A lot of conversations and happy memories. My dad and aunt were reminiscing about snowball fights and such from their childhood. There was a healthy conversation about politics, which I thought for sure would change the mood, but surprisingly did not. After several hours and a nice dinner, everyone made their way to the living room for coffee and to just hang out on the couches. I left my coffee on the kitchen table and made my way to the back of the house where the only bathroom was. I washed my hands, fixed my shirt, and walked out of the bathroom. When I walked into the hallway, I was greeted by my grandma who was just standing there staring at me. I said, Hi, what's going on? And I tried to keep walking, but she wouldn't move. Now this is a narrow hallway and you're only fitting one across. Excuse me, please. I said semi-annoyed, yet still she did not budge at all. Finally, she spoke up and said, What do you think you're doing? She sounded nervous and almost a little angry. I was just going to the bathroom. I said, starting to get uneasy about the entire situation. She started to poke my chest and said, Where is he? At this point, I was beyond confused. I told her I had no clue what she was talking about. Where's who? I finally shoved past her and started to make my way down the long hallway. That's when it happened. I heard her scream like a banshee and chase me down the hall. I turned around and she lunged at me with a small kitchen knife. She was trying to stab me. She just kept screaming, where is he? Where is he? At this point she had fallen to the ground trying to take me down with her. After a minute of this, my father finally came running in with my aunt and lifted her up. I was too scared to use any force because I didn't want to hurt her, but I also didn't want to get stabbed. I was so angry and upset, I started to grab my things and told my family I was leaving. As I made my way toward the door, she walked back into the living room and said in a calm voice, Oh, where are you going? You haven't even finished your coffee. I just left and didn't even respond. This woman, my grandmother, tried to stab me, and I still have no idea why. I found out several weeks later from my cousin that after my father and I left, my grandmother cried for hours and was basically inconsolable. She didn't know why we were so angry and left so abruptly. Clearly, my grandma had some sort of episode that night that she can't remember, but there are so many unanswered questions like, who was she referring to? I haven't seen or spoken to her since. My dad did try to reach out and explain to her why we left and why we won't be coming back, but she doesn't believe he is telling her the truth when he transcribes the events back to her. The worst part about all of this is that this will probably be the Christmas that I always remember the most. This is a short story that happened to me approximately three to four years ago. I used to work for a charitable company that would distribute presents to families or individuals in need during the holiday time. For the most part, I loved this job. I paid decently well and was incredibly rewarding. But on this one specific Christmas Eve, it was enough for me to never want to do something like this again. I usually worked or traveled with another associate named Jose. But since it was Christmas Eve and it was our last stop, I told him I would go alone and he could go home to his wife and enjoy what was left of the holiday. It was about 5pm so it was getting pretty dark as I made my way toward the recipient's house. I arrived and went up to the door with a big tote of presents all wrapped and ready to be distributed as they pleased. A man answered the door in pajama pants and a skin tight sleeveless shirt. The guy was overweight and clearly did not take care of himself. He looked like he hadn't shaved or showered in weeks. I said to him in my still bubbly voice, Hi, I'm Jamie and I'm here to drop off the presents. He stared at me and smiled with his yellow unbrushed teeth. He looked right at me and said, Wow, you sure are pretty. Which freaked me out a little bit. I just awkwardly smiled and said, Thanks. He then said, Honey, I have a lot of trouble with my back and I can't lift these presents. Will you please bring them into my living room for me? 
Like a fool, I complied as this wasn't an uncommon request to bring the presents in the home for those receiving them. I walked in and the man shut the door behind me. I walked slowly in his near pitch black house. What I noticed in the few seconds of being in this house was that there were no signs of children, Christmas decorations, or anything that even looked remotely festive. I turned around to ask him where I was going and that's when I noticed him. He was hunched over and staring at me like I was a piece of meat, basically salivating. He started to approach me and put his arms out like he was going for an embrace or a hug. More creeped out than I've ever been in my entire life, I decided the answer was to just run away. I dropped the presents there and ran to the door. He locked it behind me. The knob was locked and so was the chain. I quickly was able to get them undone and out of the house without any further incident. I got into my car and called my supervisor and explained the situation to him. What he told me next made my eyes fill up with tears. I had mixed up two of the numbers in my GPS when I set out for the house. I was on the wrong block and clearly at the wrong house. The guy wasn't expecting presents and played along to get me into his house. I have no idea what his intentions were and am thankful nothing else happened. Running through the scenario in my head makes me wonder how I was able to undo the locks before he grabbed me or made a move towards the door. However, his pause in action or change of heart may have very well saved my life. The traumatizing events of this story happened to me several years ago. This is the first time I'm sharing my story publicly in hopes it may help others who read it. At the time, I was a mother of a four-year-old daughter. Her name is Juniper and she is my entire life. The day of these events, my husband was at work so I decided to do some Christmas shopping at the mall. On the way in, Juniper saw Santa sitting in the middle of the atrium and began jumping because I assume she associated Santa with presents. We decided to get into line, even though it was long. We could get a picture and she could tell Santa what she wanted for Christmas. When it was finally Juniper's chance to sit on his lap, I immediately felt uncomfortable. I didn't like the way he was staring at her. His eyes were big and looked as if though he had been on something. She sat there for a moment and told the man what she wanted as I watched, filled with anxiety. After about two minutes, he got her off his lap and winked goodbye to her and said Merry Christmas. Happy this ordeal was over, we did the little bit of shopping we had to do and pressed on through the day. While I was browsing around one of the clothing stores, I looked up and thought I noticed the mall Santa sitting outside of the store we were in. Not taking any chances, I grabbed Juniper and walked out of the other entrance of the store. After a little while longer of shopping, we decided to get some lunch in the food court of the mall. I kept my eyes peeled because I just had mother's intuition that something wasn't right. We were finishing our food and literally as we were about to get up, the mall Santa came over to our table. He walked right up to Juniper and said in a jolly Santa-like voice, Hey there, Juniper. Remember to be good so Santa can come and bring you lots of presents. She was so excited, and so were all the people around me. It's easy to say what you would do in that situation, but I just stood still. I thought freaking out my daughter and rushing her away from Santa would be a traumatizing event, so I grabbed her hand and told her it was time to go. She said goodbye to Santa, and we left. That night at home, I told my husband about the entire story. He was angry, but agreed with my course of action. The next day, I woke up at about 8 a.m., my husband was already gone for work for the day. I happened to look outside and saw a strange blue car that I had never noticed parked outside my house. This didn't really bother me considering it could have been anyone, but it was just peculiar. At about 11am, I looked out the window again and noticed the car was still in the exact same spot. I made the choice to go out to my mailbox in front of my home and investigate the car. The car was empty, except for the passenger seat. There was a Santa hat on the seat. I tried not to jump to any conclusions, but it was just starting to make too much sense in my head. I ran inside and called my husband. He said I was grasping at straws, but decided to come home anyway to make sure I was okay. A couple of minutes later, my worst fear was realized. 
I looked out the window and saw the man in his car. It was the mall Santa, and he was taking a picture of my house with his cell phone. Once he saw me, he drove away, and he drove away so fast I couldn't get the license plate number. Minutes later, my husband came home and I explained what I saw. We called the authorities, but there really wasn't anything that could be done. I felt angry with myself that I looked at the car all morning and couldn't get a license plate number. My husband stayed home from work the next day just in case. At about noon, we walked around the house and noticed footprints outside of Juniper's window. Footprints in the snow that neither of us left. That night, I couldn't sleep. I felt like I was just waiting for something horrible to happen. My husband, Juniper, and I all decided to have a camp out in the living room so she could be with us all night. Shortly after midnight, my husband and I were alerted to the sound of a car pulling up. It was the mall Santa car from the day before, and he was approaching the house with a giant bag in his hand. I called the police as my husband stalked him through the windows. The lights were off, so the mall Santa couldn't see us through the windows. He made his way all the way to Juniper's window. He started to tap on the windows, almost as if though he was trying to wake her up. My husband stood on the other side of the window, trying not to scare him away until the cops came. That's when we heard it. Hey, Juniper, it's Xana. Come take a ride in my sleigh and I'll show you the reindeer. Praying that the cops would show up any minute, I sat in the fetal position not knowing if this lunatic had a gun or any other weapon. He kept tapping and whispering, It's me, Santa. Finally, the cops showed up and when we heard the sirens out front, my husband jumped out the window and tackled the mall Santa. My husband yelled for the cops and the cops detained the man. He didn't have any weapons on him, but his car did have duct tape and rope. It gives me nightmares to this day, thinking of that horrible situation and what could have happened. My Christmas miracle is that my family is safe and my daughter didn't have to really experience any of the intense feelings my husband and I did over those couple of days. If you as a parent have instincts about the safety of your child, please follow them. If I would have just left them all when I felt uneasy, I could have possibly avoided this entire series of events. This happened two years ago, but I always think about it. Every Christmas Eve, we spend the evening at my grandparents' house where we have a feast and swap presents with cousins, all the people we won't be with on Christmas morning. It was a merry and festive evening, and spirits were high, if not a little worn out, on our way home. Pulling into our driveway, we instantly felt something was off. In the corner of our house, decoration lights were hanging haphazardly free of the roof, and something else we couldn't quite pinpoint right away. Luckily, the kids were already asleep from the soothing dark car ride, so we sat in the driveway, the motor off and ticking as it starts to cool. Did we leave that many lights on inside? My husband asked me, because he would never. He is a stickler for turning out lights before we leave. I shook my head no. The Christmas tree was the only thing we left on, but now there was a soft glow from the windows at two ends of the house one being the primary living room area toward the front where we were, and the other the window at the left side of the house, the hallway bar our bedroom, and it slightly lit the side yard between our house and the neighbor. We both agreed that it looked like someone was or had been in our home. Call the cops. Stay in the car with the doors locked. He recranked the car and I didn't even bother getting out. I just slid over the center console until the driver's seat just in case. He has a concealed carry permit, so he drew his weapon and went to check the front door. It was still locked, so he unlocked it about the time I started telling the police that our house seemed suspicious and we thought someone might be in it. They of course said that we should wait outside, but I knew that there was no use in telling my husband that as he was already starting inside and flicking on more lights. It was nerve-wracking to sit there and watch the open front door spilling light onto the lawn, I cracked my window just the tiniest bit so I could hear sooner if something started happening. Luckily nothing did and when the cops pulled up I let them know my husband was inside and what he was wearing since he did have his gun out. 
but all the opening and shutting of car doors alerted him and woke the kids so he'd come back to the front door with his gun back under his jacket. I went back to keep the kids busy while he talked to the cops and then the cops cleared the house. Our visitors were no longer there but they had broken in through the backyard. Many of our Christmas presents were gone, the heaviest ones it seemed as I'd bought most of them and they had left one of their own, a large pile of poop on the back porch mat. Decorations I had up inside were knocked down and scattered all over the place, the tree completely disheveled, two pieces from my nativity scene were smashed on the floor, our laptops were gone and my jewelry box had also been pilfered, but unbeknownst to them, although some had sentimental meaning, that was all custom or low level stuff, anything real was in our hidden safe they had not found. My husband made sure not to touch the light switches that had been on so that they could dust for prints and other evidence was taken and we gave a report for the theft. It seems they spent a while inside the house without much fear, brazenly turning on lights, leaving a steaming pile and, maybe as they left, hopping up and tearing the Christmas lights off the corner of the house. No out-of-the-place fingerprints came back so they must have been wearing gloves and it remains unsolved. Next year, I asked for a security system for Christmas.